Hi, my name is Jake Dixon. I'm 21 years old and I'm a carpenter from Sydney. As a kid, we moved around a lot. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't understand why too much at the time. Um, my dad is a recovering addict. He was a drug addict at the time, so we moved to house, um, from house to house. We never really stayed at the same place for longer than a year, and it really made my childhood really disconnected in some ways. This was just all because of a drug addiction that as a kid I didn't understand. I just thought dad was never around. But um, towards, towards the end of that time, we ended up going to a rehab in uh, Shell Cliffs, which is up in Coast Harbour. It was a family-based uh, rehab where the whole family could be involved. As a kid, I had a natural uh, athletical ability. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, playing soccer. It was um, one of my little passions. I became fixated that my, my dream was going to be playing for the Socceroos at about the age of eight. Um, I loved watching, playing them, watching them play, watching just soccer players play and watching the famous people on TV. And I always had this dream that one day I'm going to be on TV to play soccer. Once we moved into Sydney, um, my soccer dream started to sort of fall into place. I thought to myself, we're going to a big city with lots of opportunities, there'd be lots of uh, clubs out there that I'd be able to play with. And here's a little kid just getting really excited just to move into a city, into a city instead of a small town to play for a, uh, for a soccer team. So I thought this would be, this would be it, this, 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 is, this is my dream. But, um, so I started off small just playing for my um, local club side. My mum and dad ended up seeing that I really was passionate about soccer. So within a couple of months I was enrolled in an academy um, at about the age of 10. And that just up, up my level um, in soccer majorly. I was training five, to, uh, five days a week and the coaches used to always tell me that I had a skill of just reading the game and being teachable in that area of my life. So in 2008, my, my dream to becoming a soccer star became more of a reality than I could have ever imagine. Uh, I came very good at my academy and I got picked up for the Australian side, the under 12s. And we went over to South Africa to go play in the United Nations Cup and this is when I realised that I'm just not just a regular soccer player anymore, this is my shot at being a famous soccer player. My dream of becoming a soccer player became a bit of a reality but things in the family back home started to have a really bad turn. Um, my brother and sister were born um, and it was a bit complicated in the birth. Um, Mum having twins was told that it was, uh, at her age, was pretty um, dangerous to do. Uh, we still went along with it, um, in full faith that we were gonna have another brother and sister and it was, it was great when they were born. But uh, complications of the birth left um, mum and dad in the hospital for um, over a year, just looking after uh, my brothers and sisters. It put a massive strain um, mentally on my life, um, just not knowing what the next term was going to be like. And then on top of that, dad ended up losing his business at around the same time, and that really made the life of the family uh, quite stressful. Home was no longer a safe place, home was more of a grieving place for uh, depression. Um, I hear I had a dad who was suffering from his business loss and felt like it was all his fault. And um, he, he, he just didn't really want to go and conquer life at that time. It was, it was really hard to see. Things weren't all dark though. Um, my soccer career started to really kick off. I was still training really hard um, and I started to see results. At the age of 15, I um, was offered to go to Spain for five years, but um, due to the family circumstances, I felt like if I left, I'd be leaving my family behind, and I couldn't do it. My heart couldn't do it. Um, and around about this time, I stopped going to church a lot. Um, I started filling my life with people who were not good influences on me. I started hanging around the wrong areas, the wrong times. And, um, this started to cause arguments with me and my father so he could see that my attitude to life was changing and the people I was putting in my life were not always positive and um, good influences for me. My soccer career hit a peak at the age of 17. I went over to America with our AFS, which is the Australian Football Scouts, and we were looking at going to colleges to go play for American teams over there. And um, while doing that, we had the uh, 
privilege and honor to be a part of the new York Red Bulls and uh, go and get involved with them. And things were getting really, really positive. Um, I was looking to play with them, I started training with them, and I was going to become an MLS soccer player. This was kind of a big deal for me, because my dream as a kid was uh, to be a soccer player, a famous soccer player. And here I was, overseas, in America, fulfilling my dream. So I was outstandingly excited. Things at home, however, weren't turning for the best. My sister was uh, going a bit downhill, she was in hospital a bit, and uh, my family was starting to fall apart. It felt like I was being a bit selfish, but leaving my family for my dream and not being there to support them. And um, at the same time, I had a clash of I had to go to college and I started questioning myself if this is really going to be my dream or if I'm going to not reach my goal and then have nothing to fall back onto. So I ended up coming back, to, I ended up coming back to Australia and just going into work as a carpenter and mostly gave up my dream. At 18, my life was still going downwards. Uh, I moved out into my uh, girlfriend's house I just to want to escape from home, uh, the struggles and the stress that I was going through there. Around that same time, my head started to get really into a mess and I started partying every week. Um, I started to drown myself in alcohol to get rid of all the fear and rejection of measuring up in life and my life started to turn into a wreck. Soon enough, uh, partying started to have a toll on me. I started losing a lot of money. Uh, I couldn't afford to keep partying. And then one of my friends said to me, we should sell drugs. Um, I didn't realize the effect this would actually have on me. At first, I just thought this was just a quick little money buzz. And it really was. I, um, so I got introduced into MDMA, uh, pills and cocaine, very quickly and I started to see the, the fruit of how much money you can get off selling this illicit substance. Uh, very quickly I became hooked into um, selling drugs. The money got me addicted very, very quickly and my, uh, my life started to turn from being this uh, nice person into money hungry, thirsty person just looking for himself. Uh, living in a lifestyle I was living with a lot of drugs around me and people around me who wanted drugs, stuff started to go wrong. Uh, soon enough life's temptations to touch these things became very strong and evident. Um, here I was suffering through anxiety and depression in some parts of my life and I was seeing people around me getting this buzz and the happiness out of these substances. So uh, soon enough I found myself indulging. I started using drugs from weekend use to day use. I became addicted to cocaine uh, quite heavily and addicted to Xanaxes. Me, not knowing that I had an addictive tendency, started abusing it. I started realizing that I could run to this and I can have, I can find happiness in, in a drug. If I didn't have anything, I don't have any of it, I, I simply wasn't happy. I started paying for the drugs I was taking instead of earning money from the drugs that I was taking. And um, I started to realise that I was stuck in that loop that everyone around me was stuck in. And life really started to just turn bad. I started losing money, I started losing friends. I uh, ended up living back with my parents uh, as a last retreat to get away from everything. But at the end, I lost everything and it just cost me. I started to think to myself, how did I get here? How did I get into this massive hole of depression? Things got so bad, um, I stopped looking for a buzz in cocaine and started looking uh, into Xanaxes for a zombie numbing effect. Uh, my feelings were just down and depressed and I no longer uh, hunted for a high of happiness, but now I just wanted to mask all my emotions and keep moving on in life. And Xanax became a massive problem. At this point in time, life was miserable. Um, I saw heaps of people around me that was happy, uh, successful in life and I started questioning what's value to my life. Uh, I was just in and out working, numbing my feelings and I wasn't enjoying life. Um, so I started to question myself if I should even be on this earth.
And that's when I came up with the conclusion of killing myself. The week from hell arrived, and um, one night I was sitting in my room, and I just decided I'm just going to down a whole bottle of Xanaxes, and that was enough in my mind to kill me. At five o'clock in the morning, my um, dad found me blue on the floor, uh, passed out, and rushed me to hospital. Um, when I got to hospital, sure enough, um, it was not looking good. I was uh, really, really lucky to be alive. Uh, the doctor said that there was a guardian angel looking after me. I was there for 15 more minutes. I could possibly have been dead. Um, I come to the conclusion while I was in hospital that I needed help, more than just the help that I was giving myself or looking by running away. I actually needed to face my problems and try and start fixing them. My life had come so far from living the dream of being a soccer player to lying in this bed at the hospital. So I started looking around for help. I uh, found this place uh, called 1AETC, which is a men and women's uh, drug and alcohol rehabilitation centre, and um, quickly rang them up to see if I could get myself enrolled there. Coming to 180, uh, you know, they did a lot for me. They have restored my hope in my life. They have built up my dreams. And we have actually dealt with some of the deepest problems. You know, we didn't just take drugs because they were fun. You know, deep down we started taking them because we are masking pain. And um, 180 has helped me just dissect the pain that I was going through and um, how to get through it without uh, masking my feelings with substances. And um, you know, they've really brought my family life back together. Um, you know, with, without 180, I don't know where I'd be right now. Um, you know, my family are now happy. Um, I'm happy, and um, life has just been getting better and better and better. So, yeah. They also restored my relationship with God, which I left out from the door a long time ago. Um, I just thought God was this Santa Claus off in the cosmos. I didn't really think too much of him, but when I came to 180, I started to realise that through my addiction, God was still there. I could pick out plenty of times in the past where I, it was just in my mind a coincidence, but I definitely had God, God's hand over me during all the dark times and even the good times. So I'm so grateful that my faith has been reboosted through 180. 180 is now giving me a future. Uh, I'm really excited and pumped. Uh, for what the future actually holds. Um, you know, the doors have been opened in some aspects of my life that I never thought would be opened again. Uh, my soccer career could not be over. I could go back into it. And also God's opened up other doors to uh, ministry and other places in my life that I never thought I'd see. I can't wait to live the rest of my life not depending on substances and finding true happiness in God himself.